We're honored to have here today as a walker and a guest speaker, Dr. Christopher Austin. Dr. Austin is a Princeton and Harvard trained neurologist. He has also held a, a research fellowship in genetics at Harvard. But he is here today, however, as a top official of the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda. Specifically, Dr. Austin is director of the National Center for Advancing Translational Sciences, also known as NCATS. This is the part of NIH that is directly responsible for their activities in the field of rare diseases research, of which Angelman syndrome is one of them. You'll also be pleased to know that Dr. Austin is the keynote speaker at the Joint Angelman Syndrome Foundation and the Duke 15Q Alliance, the scientific symposium in Cambridge, Mass. in mid-August. So this is a heavy, heavyweight hitter here for rare diseases. Well, this is obviously not the time and place for a long speech by Dr. Austin, but I wanted him to meet you and for you to meet him and for you to hear how the landscape is changing for rare disease research and the role of Dr. Austin in the National Institutes of Health in that fight. With that brief introduction, Please join me in welcoming Dr. Chris Austin. Come on up, Chris. Afterwards. Okay. Well, it's great to be here, and thanks to Devar, uh, who was a friend of ours from our church, and so it's great to, to be able to meet with you. And uh, yeah, this is not a time for a long scientific speech, even though that's usually what I give. Um, so let me just make a couple points. First, um, Devar mentioned the fact that I'm the head of something called NCATS, and uh, translation is the term that scientists use for transforming a, uh, an observation in the lab, like the knowledge that, that UBA3A is responsible for, for, for Angelman syndrome, into an intervention, a drug, a device that actually improves the, the disease. And that process, as you all know, is very poor now. It takes a long time, costs a lot of money. And up until NCATS got formed about two years ago, nobody actually worked on this problem, believe it or not, this general problem. And it's particularly, it's, so that's what NCATS does. And NCATS works uh, really disproportionately in rare diseases. You may know that there's actually 6,000 rare diseases. And so you have many, many, many compatriots in this country. There's actually 25 million people in this country who have rare diseases, one of those 6,000 rare diseases. And, and so we are not approaching them as one disease at a time because we're big believers in what our mothers taught us that, that you know, the knee bone's connected to the leg bone. And if you approach rare diseases, not as, uh, as isolated entities, but as connected to many other diseases like Rett syndrome and Prader-Willi syndrome and, and all the ones that you're familiar with, we're gonna be able to make headway much faster than we otherwise would. The second thing I should tell you is that, that this is a really exciting time for science in, in Angelman syndrome. You, you may know that if, if the, the words epigenetic silencing and uh, 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 imprinting, these words that probably a few years ago didn't mean much to you, they, they are subjects of entire scientific conferences now. It's one of the hottest areas of scientific research. And, and the, the other thing you should know is that the defect in, in, in Angelman syndrome is, is theoretically at least one of the ones that ought to be most tractable from a therapeutic standpoint. And I, I could go into, I'd be glad to tell you anybody, any, anybody who hears why that is, but just take my word for it. And so, so the question, last thing I'd like to just sort of put in your heads is, is so what does a foundation like the, the Angelman Syndrome Foundation do? How do they fit into the, 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 the progress that, that, that needs to be made in this disorder. And, and, and I should tell you, this is, a, this is a very personal thing for me, uh, because as a neurologist, you, you heard DeVar uh, say that I'm a neurologist by training. I used to see uh, kids and adults with Angelman syndrome uh, as a neurologist. I was so frustrated by how poor the treatment was that that's actually why I decided to go back and do genetics. 
uh, and this was back in the mid 80s, because I was a firm believer that if we could understand the genetics, then we could get back and actually do something for the patients that I couldn't treat. And so you are where I started. You are why I'm doing what I'm doing. And, and we, it's very exciting that we're at a time where what I wanted to do 30 years ago is actually within, within reach. So what does the foundation do? You, you may think, well, it's only $55,000, it's only a million dollars. What you have to realize is that foundations like yours play an absolutely critical role in what those of us at NIH and the larger ecosystem are trying to do. Why is that? It's because, because the amount of money that you uh, can contribute often starts research projects that otherwise wouldn't start by themselves, and then that brings in 10 or 100 times as much money into these diseases. Because as you might imagine, there's 6,000 diseases, so which ones do you work on? So I'll just give you one brief example and then we'll, we'll go on the walk. About four or five years ago, uh, some parents with a, uh, another neurological disorder called uh, neiman pixi disease, you may have seen there's an article in the Wall Street Journal a few months ago that DeVar can send you about, uh, about this, this project we've been doing for the last five or six years. But this project started because parents from a foundation came to us and they said, we really want to do something for our kids. And, and they were able to contribute, able to fund uh, in our lab uh, $200,000 that funded a, a researcher in the lab that, that, that was able to get that project going since then. And because of that funding, we've been able to put in somewhere between five and eight million dollars. I've actually lost track of how much money we've spent uh, on this program. And, and that there is now a drug in a clinical trial right now as a result of, of that project. And it never would have started had it not been from that $200,000 that came from the foundation. So, so what you're doing today is absolutely critical and, and it will get built on by people like me and it will allow people like me to, to, to work on your, on, your, on your disease. And I, and I hope you'll stay with us and, and, and do that with us. So thank you for having me. Thank you, Chris. That's fantastic.